Is it a good time to be a black person in America? A person of color in America? I talked to my friend, Marcel Russell. Now, Marcel is an incredible human being. He is a, a minister, a, a deeply spiritual man, a, a recording artist, and was the most awarded independent R&B artist in the city of Baltimore, Maryland. Today, he actually has his own company. He's at the head of a 50-person financial advisory firm. He's deeply embedded in the black community, and I thought he is the perfect person to help me really understand, is it a good time to be black in America today? If you are politically or socially sensitive, this is not the interview for you. He says a lot of things that would be construed as controversial. So if you're up for it, I hope you enjoy this episode of the LifeWorks podcast. Marcel, the, the reason why I wanted to have you on this morning was 2020 really shined a light on black and brown communities, especially. I think what one of the big highlights was really the systemic inequities that were surfaced, police treatment, things like that. And it really shined a light on, on the black community in particular. And the thing that is of interest to me is that we're presented with a view of the black community in the news and even in social media. And I don't know that people have a complete picture. I think that a person who goes and they read white fragility and they think, okay, now I get it and I'm now woke. And I genuinely believe that it takes a little bit more than a book to get you there, but I think there's a lot more work there. But I, what I'm hoping to, to do is really explore the black community and really show people what it's truly like to be black in America today. Is it a good time to be a black person in America today? I'm sure I would disrupt quite a few African-Americans because I believe most of what we're dealing with now is just mental and emotional. You have, my grandfather was a sparring partner with Joe Lewis and he was a sharecropper. His uh, massa, as they would say, it was illegal to send children into war when you had children already. When you owned the land and the slaves, you were only supposed to send, and he had a plethora of sons. He put my grandfather's name down. That's a life with no choices. There's a video that shows a flea, a tick. You jump about 18 inches, and it shows in the video that if you put a top in a mason jar, three inches tall, and leave it there, put holes in it, and leave it for a week, the tick will never jump past the line ever again. So as a matter of fact, it would teach his children and the children's children to never jump past the line. So you could traumatize people enough that they, just like an elephant, not breaking off a chain. Right. You can really do damage to people. And unfortunately, they got to work harder to break the chains. And it's easy to say, just break them. If you weren't programmed like an elephant over your parents and your grandparents, but I still believe we can break them. And uh, it's very much more mental. I was working in corporate America. I had two incidents. And uh, one I had, I was left to manage the office. And a white guy said, do you think I'm going to listen to you N-word the next 30 days? Wow. And a black guy had walked into the office. I think it was a janitor. And he said, if you don't kill this white boy, you're going to let him. He was going on and on and on. And I didn't respond to either one. And I let them both finish. And I said to the white guy, if I hit you in your face, a heel, but not if I hit you in your pockets. So this is your commission arrangement the next 30 days and your salary arrangement. I'll be emailing corporate. I said to the janitor, the black guy, my grandmother said, it's not what they call you is what you answer to. Reason why you walked in acting a fool, because you believe you're that. So you are off for the next seven days with no pay for barging and hedonic. Obviously, they both had their opinions, but that's not how I see myself. So do I believe it's a good time? Yeah, I believe my grandfather would have loved to chose insults over an actual culture. I think he would have. Do I think either one is good? No, nobody deserves that. But children are 
rude in the elementary school. And parents just guide them. They have no filter. It's important to me to teach my children. People are going to say words. Um, Daddy's job is to help you develop a high emotional IQ. Because everybody is dealing with um, the narcissism of white supremacy. I was in a rally in down south. And they did $300,000 of damage. It's a white rally. Eight girls got raped. And um, it was bad. And I said to the guys on the board, I feel worse for you right now, Bill. Because of your whiteness, you can't even bring justice to these eight rape girls because you want to preserve. White supremacy is narcissism that everybody suffers. We just got to focus on God, man. Nothing is great. We made this false religion up. We made this fake belief that somebody is more superior because of melanin. I was like, I have a lazy eye. If I created a whole movement on my lazy eye, on my flat feet, the most insane thing I've ever heard. But there are actually people who believe that they're less or more because of that. Yeah. But to answer your question, yeah, I believe blacks are better off. I think we're more ignorant than we've ever been, but I definitely think we're positioned better. But the ignorance, I think, has our net worth is headed to zero. Right now it's 3500 per household. But you just think of Maryland, D.C., Virginia, just the blacks in America, if they were a nation, you're talking about 195 countries around the world, you're talking about almost 8 billion people, just the blacks here in the U.S. is the 10th wealthiest nation in the top 10 on planet Earth. That's just exceptional. I think that's staggering. But when you program somebody, none of that matters. Mm -hmm. So I think we're positioned to do better than we've ever done, I think. We're not trained and informed to often do better. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about the ignorance that you just mentioned. A lot of that fear is passed down. I have some elderly white friends who tell me, I remember a time, one of them knew my grandfather, and he said, if you were to hug your children and your wife and you enjoyed her presence, then we'll figure a way to tap the family. So they had to act like they're not pressed. They don't love them. They don't care just so they can make it home. Two generations later, there's an affection issue in the community. You don't even know why. It was a survival mechanism 50, 60, 70 years ago. Now we're just doing it because it's programming. And so now the Black communities, I'll give you another ignorant one. Attitude on fathers is the most deplorable on the planet in America. Through segregation, Jim Crow, slavery, we would get married at 80%. We led every group at marriage. Now it's roughly 20, 25% for black women. You have to program people to think like that. The black community's attitude towards fathers is unreal. 16 times more black women um, commit false accusations to land black men in jail than white women did during prohibition and slavery. 16 times more black women wow. are doing it to their own child's father. It was when the white women did so it's like, then what are we saying, guys? We're doing it 16 times more. They programmed corporate and government, right? In general, average white mother in America watches $70,000 of TV and social media before she dies. The average black mother watches 80000 wow. with their child present. You got 24 hours and you sleep eight, you work eight, right? And then breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that's 19. And uh, you may have an hour to shower and get ready. So that's four hours. So you essentially used the four hours you use watching other people live. So a lot of it is self-inflicted now. You could just turn that off. But one of the things is when you remove fathers, the basic attribute for anybody that needs to be successful is they got to have an attitude about correction. And that's something you typically learn between two and four years old. When you remove the father, you remove the attitude and development of coaching and, and correction. You can never be successful in business and anything you touch if you can't be corrected. One of the first questions they ask high level CEOs is, so tell me about your upbringing. And then they ask, tell me about your father. Because they know fathers create emotional IQ and mothers often help with the IQ. But if you can't control yourself emotionally through discipline, direction, we can't pay you big dollars. And so corporate, and government, to me, did a, a heinous, intentional agendas 
on the black community, welfare programs, and all kinds of things that I'm very sad about. But I try to remind the black community, you still have a choice. And I'm really sorry about the garden and telling you eat the apple. But the truth is you still have a choice. Even if it's packaged well, you don't have to let them get you. And so I struggle with so much focus on white people. I'm always telling black people, I don't care what white people are doing. Most of them are broke. I, I was talking to some white buddies I had and I said, man, you don't go into most white neighborhoods. I said, bro, you had a cheat code for 400 years and you still fail. The heck I'm listening to you for? 70% of all wealth is lost on the second generation. 70%. 90% by the grandchildren. So most people squandered all of it anyway. So I don't really, but that's that funky thinking that they're better because. And uh, I hang with white guys who are productive. I hang with Arab guys who are productive. I hang with Asian guys who are productive. I hang with blacks who are productive. Yes, I'm intentional about my community. And I've had white people say, do you think it's fair that you so pro-black? I said, well, being pro-black does not mean I'm anti-white. I'm not anti your people. I'm just First Timothy 5. And the Bible says, if you do not take care of your extended family, especially on household, what is extended? That means the people who took you to school. It means the people who helped you learn homework, who protected you from a bully. And most of those people in most of our cases are the people that look similar to us historically. Yeah. That's how life works. So for me, if I was to take care of them first, and in particular, my immediate household, that means most of the time I'm going to be pouring into or giving back to as a thank you to my community. And what if white people did it? First off, I do. And I think that's awesome. I don't have an issue with that. The Asians circulate dollars in their own community, $28. Um, the Jews, I think it's like 20 or 22. White America is like 17. But Black Americans within four to six hours of direct deposit, over 90% of their money is gone mm. to other communities. That's program. Mm. So I spend four to six hundred dollars a month intentionally on black businesses. I don't march. I'm like, I'm not marching with you guys. You get mad at some town with white folk, you rent all the hotels, eat up all that groceries, and you brought them ten million dollars of economy. You just pay for them to buy more batons to bust you in the head. I'd rather not go to any of that stuff and shift my economy to you take people's money away, they'll calm down. What is the sentiment right now in in black and minority communities, in your observation? They focus too much on police. It's an issue, but police deaths for blacks, I think, is one out of six. Black on black death, I think, is, is ranked number two. Wow. So the police out of top 10 is below half. Number one thing is food, right? So... Melanin people in particular cannot eat processed foods. We explode, our hands, our eyes. It does something more extreme eat processed foods. But the sentiment is the man and it's holding us down and the George Floyd thing. And listen, injustice is injustice. It's not cool. But I believe the Bible says, give Caesars what is Caesars. And Many conservatives want to keep government out their lives, but that wasn't just their idea. It was Jesus's. If Jesus was the more I can do without Caesar being in my house, I'm cool with it. I want you guys to focus on values that matter to me, God, mm -hmm. more than direction of the government. They're going to do what benefits them financially. Of course. They make their money on taxes. They don't make, they don't have any money. They make money on the working people. So when the black community allows themselves to be manipulated through the government and corporations like that, your family is automatically gone. So I think the sentiment for blacks, and, and when you have 80% of the people who are fatherless, black Instagram is 95% fatherless people. So you're almost afraid in the black community to have character. Um, you're scared to be counseled. I know they wouldn't want me to say this, because a lot of times blacks want to bring up the why. I'm like, no, it's the truth that set you free. Let's just deal with the truth first. Then we can address the why, but you can't change it unless you face the, you know, man, hey man, you keep robbing banks. Let's talk about why, I know Jack. Let's first talk 
or the fact you keep robbing banks. Let's <laughs> address that first. And then we can talk about, and I'm really sorry, ever since you was little, you've been groomed into that. But it's morally wrong to be robbing banks. I know there are more white women than Asian women, Native American women, Black women, and Latino women combined on welfare. It's more white women. But percentage-wise of who's taking advantage of it, it's Black women. They think it's free money. They think it's no big deal. I think you're a thief and a robber when you know, when I'm on your Instagram page and you're taking pictures and you just ran a half marathon or you in the gym and everything you posted was money from taxpayers. And uh, I think that's deplorable. But the sentiment is, I think a lot of the black community is socialist in the worst way without even knowing it. I know they will be really angry to hear me say that, but I think a lot of blacks at this point would rather handouts than work for it. How would you describe 2020 in terms of what was happening within black and minority communities in our country? Sensationalized. I just, I think it was a great time for white Americans to be more empathetic to how systemic things are. And that's really bad. When I was going, I was working in Marysville near Columbia, five to maybe eight times a year, I was just pulled over. And when I get pulled over, my office was next to the exit. And so my owner was always, his window was facing it. And of maybe three of those times he saw me and he just drove out to the police and said, why are you pulling this man over? And it would just be anything. So I'm not saying that there's not targeted injustice. I'm not saying that, but in the scheme of my life, all the stuff I got going on, that ain't even in my top five of things I'm worrying about or top 10 this month alone. When I get pulled over, I just want to know, is my license up to date? Is my stuff? I can help you officer. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, yeah, there are some, I've seen guys who are just gaslighting. They want something. But for the most part, if your stuff is together, man, you're going to be out of there in five minutes. Let's move on. On the job, the white guys would say, I don't know what this is like. I don't even wake up thinking about that, right? And I'm like, that's cool. However, Blacks have become so sensationalized that now we're making something that's in the top 10, maybe top 20 of your life. You're making it your life. And it's like, these officers are not waking up every day. And I, I know I have detectives and chiefs of police as clients. I know when they tell me about the quotas. I know sometimes the agenda to go into the black community just to get a certain amount of tickets. But the, still the truth is, how's your license? And so they don't like, they doing it because we black. I'm like, honestly, mostly because you're poor. Mm. It's more because you broke than it's because you're black. It's just easier to target. And that's all around the world though. They tend to target the disenfranchised. And that's been like that for 10,000 plus years. And that's never going to change. You're not going to see the centurions in the Bible target wealthy people. It ain't going to go over well for you. All those, all the well to do, they only need to have three or four meetings with the leaders of the land. And that's going to stop. So I tell African Americans, you got to understand economy, finance. Because the, the game we're playing is capitalism. And the real color is green and white, not black and white. Everybody's an N-word when they broke enough. But the sentiment is hopelessness. The sentiment is victimism. The sentiment is blaming. L let's not get it twisted. It's a lot of incredibly positive things that the Blacks are doing that just doesn't get mentioned. For instance, that's why I tell you, 540,000 Black men kill Black men. But 3 million white men kill white men in that same amount of time. It never got brought up. So it wasn't that the black on black crimes weren't terrible. It's that it was sensationalized. And so then people begin to see themselves a certain way, which is to me a crucial part of importance of family. Because you fathers can control that narrative. But when they're not around, when you have homes where there's no father, it's definitely going to be a much more emotional home. Um, it's going to be less accountability. It's going to be less logic, less reasoning. So yeah, 2020, but I think the frustration for whites is all right. All of that was done. Some of it was done before me. I, what are you guys asking us to do? 
you're asking me to do, though. Yeah. I'm really sorry. I have blacks. You need to hire more in the workplace. And you, do you agree with that, Marcel? I don't know. I have a private company I built for my children. I hired a bunch of my friends and my family. And you come walk in and say, no black people here. I don't hang with you. So I hired everybody I went to church with. Different people. The company I was a VP at, 76% of them didn't have a college degree. I think 91% of them grew up together in some form. I was purposely <laughs> recruiting that family and friends. They yeah. work better. That's right. I was one of the only black guys in the, I hired another black and they were, this is ridiculous. If you had a company from around the way, they would mostly be the people you know. Sure. Of course. So I, don't, I get big corporations, but 99% of the businesses in America are small businesses. So for the most part, they're going to look like the people they grew up with. So a lot of times blacks say, so what side are you on? <laughs> I think I'm on the side of justice, man, and righteousness yeah. more than this extremes you guys focus on. What do you think about the social justice movements and, and everything that happened last, last year? I'm not a fan of Black Lives Matter. That gets everybody going. Why not? Well, if you go on that page, they'd say we're number one interested in eradicating and reforming the nucleus family. You're done with me. Everything comes from the family. Everything. We're interested in including transgender and blah, blah, blah. The two major funders are old white guys that are funding this movement. That's interesting. One of the leaders of Black Lives Matter just bought a $1.6 million mansion. Where the heck you get this money from? That's pretty good for a nonprofit. That's pretty good for a nonprofit. <laughs> <laughs> I think they took in about one and a half to $2 million a month throughout their existence, averaging. Where's this money going? Most of the women, rest their souls, they had children who died at the hands of injustice, didn't get any of that money. So, or little, if any, nothing that could pay off their home or that, because the devastation from that fiscally is unreal, especially when you don't have enough money for a funeral. All of that is just fiscally, it will set you back another a decade. So I'm not a fan of, I am a fan of Black lives, I think, and I don't think Blacks should make everybody a fan of their lives. It's okay. Like, I'm not going to Kentucky and say, you need to be a fan of my, listen, bud, what are you doing? <laughs> so I understood what some people were saying, all lives matter. In a sense, what we're saying, Black lives matter at the expense of you not having anything. Now we're going from equality to envy. And that is unrighteous. I don't want Mark stuff because I'm a disenfranchised Black. I just want the opportunity. If Mark worked for it, let him keep it. Just give me the same opportunity. 2020, and I think... It was almost cool, which to some degree I'm grateful. 2021 had a, a vibe of, all right, 2020 is over, so what? Because everybody took a hit. And so it stopped being about Black suffering. But I'm, I'm proud of a lot of Blacks. Black entrepreneurship for Black men is up 400%. Black women, 300%. Black women in the DMV have more master degrees than all the other racial groups. Nigerians have more PhDs than all the other racial groups. So when I meet with them to educate them, I'm like, your position better than everybody. Now you got to get educated on what to do next. And I don't get really mad at Blacks. I just tell them, listen, 97% of the finance industry is white males over 50. Y'all don't have representation. And that's not their fault that they went out and got these guys educated. We just, we don't have as many. I'm going to train as many as I can and get as many plugged into community as that can um, to educate you. But I'm not mad that Mark said, well, I don't care who he Mark said with. He did was in his best interest of his babies. But yeah, that's what I'm mad with that. What are the misconceptions that the outside world has about the Black or African-American community? All this stuff, you have to be programmed and violent. When you start saying somebody's this, you're programmed. Mm -hmm. When you start making absolutes, right. that's programming. And so some of the mis the violent, Blacks are naturally incredibly empathetic. If you go to Ghana, if you go to Sierra Leone, they have the lowest crime rate on the globe. So naturally, rich melanin people are not violent. But you take anybody, David says in the Bible, don't give me too much, God, I'll forget you. He says, don't take, 
Don't leave me too little. I will steal from you, God. David said, I will rob the creator. So I think when people are broke and feel hopeless, you're going to get that. But when somebody creates a narrative around the hopelessness Mm. that the zebra guys are evil, not that they're hopeless or that you took away family programs, because there's a part, part that the government corporate played strategically that's terrible. But when you go, but the zebra guys or the pink people or the purple people are this, that, but I honestly believe I'm going to go on a whim that they're much less racist white people than they are ignorant white people, just like they're more ignorant black people mm-hmm. to white people. My neighbor across the street is almost 70. The neighbor next to me is a VP of Bank of America. Another one. They're all white. And uh, one down the street from me has a retired vet, I mean, war vet and police officer. He's black. We had meals and ate and talked. That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then immediately the stereotypes start dying. Immediately. So I think a lot of misconceptions that, and then some of them are abusive that passed down. Oh, look at how they spell their name. Or look, they probably get all, or they probably, and I, listen, statistically, it's true. Shaniqua, uh, statistically, when they looked at the name, mostly came from low income families that weren't fathered. So then you hire Shaniqua and she act like what you assume. Now she, it crystallized some disgusting stereotype. I'm very sad, but I believe in the first century church among Christians and Jews, they created social norms and they created, they clumped groups together. In Egypt, they did the same thing. So that's never going to go away. But to give answers or misconceptions, I think the violence thing is a big one. And because it doesn't give African-Americans a chance to feel at all a lot of times. They can't be sad or frustrated because it's the assumption that they really do something. And you had to program people to think that. I want to talk a little bit about your thoughts around, you mentioned it several times already, that between corporate America and the government, and I'm going to lump in the media with this as well, that there's been a lot of programming going on. Tell me a little bit about some of the things that you've seen, some of that programming that you've seen and its impact. In the 60s, the government realized in corporate that all of the leaders were funded by black businesses. Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. So they thought, we got to tear up the family first off. And then when media was a part of it, they started a concept called black exploitation in the 70s. They went from proud blacks to the only, and the blacks were indifferent. We were confused. We were like, wow, we see blacks on TV, yeah. on the movies, so should we be grateful? But it was a setup. Red with a breast out, and guys, you know, shut up, you job time sucker and cussing, and I'll drag this bee through the, and that was not Black America. The Black exploitation was like, we're gonna make this the atom bomb in the community. It's so unapologetic that when you look at those movies, most Black families can't really stomach it. It's so un- unapologetic. In the 80s, the CIA drops crack in low income Black neighborhoods. How, where does these poor black people get these guns and this cocaine from Colombia? Who, they don't even have a plane ticket. How the heck they gonna? And they did what poor and disenfranchised people do. But then the media created a narrative about blacks and drugs. And although to this day, white men are six times more likely to have illegal drugs in their car than blacks today. But the media has done a number. And I think the media obviously is corporations. So the big corporations, people always say, this TV show that came on, who funded it? I'm like, black reality shows, much like black place exploitation. They had done a survey and they found out that less than 2% of women were in the boardroom meetings creating these shows. So they never even asked the women, do they want to see this? And I tell people, if you want to know who funded it, 
look at the first five commercials that come on before it and the first five commercials that come on after. That's who funded it. And so these guys say, we want to create another narrative. They don't need men, unruly, can't be coached. So these black reality shows come in and it's like an atom bomb in the black community. I feel sad for the black community in that way, not so much that I'm black, but just as a human, I'm like, that's really, I have to tell my daughter, turn this off because I know the agenda of it. There's been a surge of diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives throughout corporate America in, in the last year and, and some, and actually it dates back several years. But I think that there's been a lot more focus on these kind of initiatives. Do you think that these kind of initiatives are helpful or, or not? What do you think about them? It doesn't make you competitive because now you're getting a job because of a stereotype. You're getting a job because of, and 90% of the initiatives are towards women. So now 60 to 80% of all heart attacks happen from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. in the morning. A lot of them are women, right? Men are naturally 30% stronger. So you got, you made women the new work mules, mules of America. And in the black communities, they definitely did that. So a lot of these initiatives, because women naturally nurture, men naturally build. So when you give all those initiatives to men, they're going to want to make it better and they're going to build. That's men. They're going to take over. They're going to every company I work for. I got to after my last job. I don't work for people anymore. I was a telemarketer in 2012. By 2014, I was a director. And by 2015, I was a VP. So in two and a half summers, I went from a telemarketer to a VP. That's very natural of men. That's not as common for women. Women want to nurture what was built. So you're like, hold on, if I can get the same work processed from somebody that just wants me to give them a title, not even really raise, I can work these folks to death for 40 years. So now what happens to these children? How are they protected? 60% of Black women are molested or sexually assaulted between birth and 35. That's just insane. That's a staggering number. It's insane. But a lot of it, fatherlessness, because they don't feel the need for fatherhood. As 26% marriage for Black women, but they have almost a 90% divorce rate. 80% of their reasons for divorce had nothing to do with infidelity or abuse. It was the need for control when they surveyed them. And so a lot of these programs, Joe Biden put up a post and says, we got $7,000 coming to you mothers and your babies. Why the heck would you put that up there? It should have been, if it was a stimulus check, for the needs of everybody, you should have left it like that. But they have such an agenda to create narratives of these women that they're victims and that all of their poor choices is not their fault. And all of this stuff, man, it's really discouraging because the corporations and the government understand family creates wealth. They know that. 90% of all millionaires are have married. They know it is power in family. In the Black community, 78% of those below the poverty line are black women. So they know <clears throat> if we can convince these folks to tear up their own legacy, we don't have to worry about them. They'll just work for us forever and we have to work worry about them taking over. It, it, this is gonna sound bad, but it sounds almost like a new slavery. I hate to put it in those terms, but it the way you're describing it, it seems like that. Tear apart the family, it individualize, separate people from people, create stereotypes around a particular community so that they can be subjugated indefinitely. Let me ask you this. What would a united black community look like? What's the impact of that? Oh my God. They know. They clearly know. A divided black America is in the top 10 in the world for wealth. They already did statistics and said that if the average Black spent one extra dollar a week, they said they would create a million jobs in Black community in less than a month, each month. So a united Black America would create a lot of millionaires, a lot more billionaires, 
but more importantly, a lot less mental illness because mm -hmm. it's very difficult to be mentally healthy. Again, when you remove the father, it's open season. So a united black America, bro, is what they understand though. If you're a corporate company, the lion is never going to tell the zebra, the gazelle, or the water buffalo how to get away. Yeah. So they're never going to explain that because if they did, what are they going to eat? So corporate companies are not going to let you get the information. They're going to go out of their way to misinform you and to distract you and entertain you. But if you decide not to plug into that, like hats off to you. What trends do you see going forward based on what you're seeing today in, in the black community? Sadly, I see blacks opening more businesses, working harder than they've ever worked and having le less net worth than they've ever had because they're still ignorant. I don't feel hopeful. America leads the planet in fatherlessness. The black community is the highest percentage of fatherless in world history. It's over. When you take that, that is the structure that creates wealth. You can't recover from that. I wish I could be hopeful. I'm hoping that there are radical influencers. There's a guy by the name of Kevin Samuels, who in his show is for speaking for men, how value men. And he's averaging 30,000 listeners a night. Wow. And he's created so much controversy in the black community. His platform is no one has ever hold black women accountable. I will. And I think this is probably one of the first times that we're saying, wow, this is bad. I think we need more of that. But even that, when you get it together and you have a five-year-old, it's going to take another quarter century to turn that around. Unless you're lying and stealing. Real wealth is Deuteronomy. This is little by little. Real wealth. Right. This doesn't come overnight. That's right. So it takes about 20 to 35 years to acquire real wealth to pass down. Yeah. So I'm uh, hopeful for the ones that are getting it, but for the majority, I'm discouraged for. So as you look back on 2020, the time that we're in now, what are you hoping that the world will learn and take away from this time? That you have a choice. Everything comes down to a choice. America's intervened in so many countries affairs that government demands are far and few in between now. Many nations have, that regime is over. Many of us have a choice. And in America, more than anywhere on the planet, you have a choice. I think it's 93% of all millionaires don't watch local news. But 97% of all poor people watch the local news. Just don't watch the local news. Fascinating. That is completely somebody's agenda. They're trying to make you see the world a very specific way. And if you want to be successful, take off, turn off the local news. This has been such an enlightening conversation. What you have laid out is that if the community can really get united around family, around critical thinking, around turning off the local news, around taking responsibility, and really getting together in a meaningful way, it could be an incredible power, an incredible force in this nation and in the world. What an incredible time this has been. And I look forward to continuing this conversation going forward. Thank you, Marcel. Hey guys, thanks for watching and listening. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button and check out some of these other clips from the podcast.